You can do it. Further adventures around the world. I don't speak enough French, but that definitely means you will die. Kendalu. Though not going the main way that everyone knows, the big pyramids, go into the Carousel de Lou. Which is an alternate entrance that doesn't have as many people. Upstairs, you could be waiting up two hours to get in, right here. That's the entrance to the Louvre right over there. There's the pyramids, the model version. And we're entering through that uh, inverse period right there. So we're actually entering inside the museum already, underground. You know, if you put a staff here and you let a light shine in, you'll find where the Ark of the Covenant is buried. By the way, hello all you wonderful people and greetings from the Louvre. This is pretty much the inverse of what you would see upstairs. It's an upside down pyramid. This whole area, you can actually touch the statues. Except for that one. That's an original, don't touch that one. Hey, get Jin. This is what happens when you touch yourself all the time. It falls off. Man, everywhere you turn here, it's just like another amazing, amazing shot or amazing picture or amazing thing. I guess that's why it's called the Louvre, it's world known. If you're a fan of the film 300, there's Leonidas at Theropolis. He looks a little perturbed, like, how am I going to get dinner reservations for all 300 of these people? Don't worry, Leonidas, I think the Hell Restaurant has seats for 300. This looks like a finale of a succession of bad choices. Like, oh my god, get these, get these swords out of my head! Oh my, I made mean, really bad decisions. I don't even know what's going on, help me here. Come and join me on an adventure of If Paintings Could Talk. Come on, give me a dollar. No, I don't have any money. Give me a dollar. No, you're naked. I don't care, give me money. Wow, that's Wing Victory right there. That's one of the most impressive sculptures here in the Louvre. You really don't want to lose your head around here. You've become a modern art masterpiece. Wait a minute, are you taking a selfie? Wait a minute, I thought this was supposed to be classic sculpture. This is Hercules versus the Hydra. Don't buy that Disney crap. This is how it really happened. He had a club and no clothes on. Yes, give daddy another drink. Oh no, mom's gonna kill us. What are you doing up there, man? In this room lies the most famous portrait in all the Louvre's collection. And a line of people just trying to get its picture. But don't forget, there's some beautiful shots all around here. But everyone wants to see that. Why does everyone want a shot of the Mona Lisa? Why? Because it's famous? I'm not sure. Like, is there, like, do these people like, oh, let me think. I want to go see this particular picture. Why? Why do they want to see it? They, are they interested in Leonardo da Vinci? Or are they just taking a picture because it's famous? Regardless, I want to do the same thing. I have a feeling that somewhere out here, Tom Hanks is trying to get his way to look at this picture and see if there's a hidden message on it. This raises an interesting question. What is art? Is the art that's on the wall right there or is the art the people watching the piece? I think that's more art than the, than the picture itself. This is like a big performance art piece, except everyone has no idea that they're a part of a performance art piece. Whoa, check out the fall of Lucifer there. Or at least that's what I assume it is. It's the fall of Lucifer, right? I wish I knew how to read. On this trip, I've seen a lot of amazing things, but really nothing has compared to the Louvre. You could say this might have been the jewel of the trip. <laughs>
Excuse me, I think there's a crumpet in my trumpet. What's the matter? Oh, I think I lost the contact. It's somewhere on the floor. Someone help me. And your one of a kind prices art starts cracking. Just put some duct tape on it. It'll be fine. Don't worry about it. Wow, a room like this, you would have no idea that they were showing off collections from Egypt. If you know King Tut, this is him. King Tony Common. King Tut, King Tut, how'd you get so funky? wild is this? You ever heard that saying, an eye for an eye? Well, this is the guy who made that saying originally. Basically, if you do something wrong, take what they take from you. So if they take your eye out, take their eye out. It's the rule of the land. The an eye for an eye makes us all blind. Free bird! Free bird! There's Napoleon, just taking a, a little bit of a nap. A dirt nap! Yeah, you, you ride that turtle. You ride that turtle. Well, I get some plush digs here, huh? Where do you even sit at that table? Like there? Or over there? Even inside the Louvre, you have to watch out for pickpockets. You forgot to leave a tip. Oh, I don't tip. Man, there's so much to see, but it's time to head out of the Louvre and go explore more further regions of Paris. Well, it's amazing how big this museum actually is. It's literally incomprehensibly big. And there's even on the ground, too. So my dad told me this joke. That river right behind me is the Seine River. If you fall into this river, you will be insane. Thanks, Dad. There's Notre Dame all the way down there. You listen carefully, you can hear someone saying, Thanks, so I... I don't know the exact spot, but Woody Allen danced right here and everybody says, I love you. Eh, somewhere down this strip. Hitchcock would be envious. Look at this little carousel in the middle of the park. It's cute. Now going from that carousel, from that nice friendly park, you end up with this like Egyptian style spire that's in the uh, center of this, I guess you'd say major roadway. This is where they used to do the public executions. That right there is where the guillotine was. People would gather around and watch people get their heads cut off. This is where Mary Antoinette got her heads cut off. Because back in the day when the French did revolution, hey, they freaking meant it. So while it looks just like something that's kind of Egyptian and out of place, now you know the dark history behind it. Yeah, at the risk of sounding punny here, gotta ask, why did they stop while they were ahead? Paris! It's a happy place. Now correct me if I'm wrong here, because I might be talking out of muscle memory. 
but I believe at the turn of the century this building was used for a big exposition in like the early 1900s where they showed off the future of the world I think also if you look at the roof of this place it looks very similar to the entrance of Tokyo Disneyland which I think this is what it's based off of That moment right before you find out there's a crab in the seashell. He is way, way too happy right now. Like seriously, this is the beginning of a sociopath. The pinnacle of Paris is the Eiffel Tower. I believe it was constructed in the early 1900s for Expo or World Fair, maybe that same Expo that they were doing for that other place I was telling you about. And uh, at first it was thought as an eyesore, like people didn't want to see it, it was like this will never work, this will never never work, and now you can't think of Paris without it. Also, in the 1900s, a man invented a flying machine, a flying machine, and he went up right up to that middle part of the Eiffel Tower. And he got up and was ready to jump off and they let him jump off and he flew all the way right into the ground, smacked in the ground and died. So, if you have a flying machine and you want to test it, come to France. They'll be happy to let you test it out here. There's actually two ways to go up the Eiffel Tower. You can actually walk up the stairs to that second level there or you can take the elevator. From there, you have to take the elevator to the very, very top. Apparently there's a point in the Eiffel Tower that becomes too, too high to walk. I guess they don't want people falling down or stopping. It's amazing to think that something that was designed to be temporary became the landmark of an entire country. So in the last 20 years that I've been here, it's kind of sad. I don't even want to go near the Eiffel Tower because if you go close to it, there's a bunch of security checks due to terrorism and everything. You get all these people up on this bridge playing that cup game and you get people trying to sell you a bunch of crap that you don't want. But man, the only reason I'm down here is because it smells like urine. And because it smells like urine, no one wants to be here. And it's a perfect shot of the Eiffel Tower. So that's luck and luck and luck, right? I guess that's, that's, that, ain't, that, ain't a bad, that ain't a bad thing. It's one plus one equals good picture. That's my math. It's a, little sad, it's a little sad how scary the world's become, but hey, it is a famous landmark and people are kind of crazy now. The tower, she is beautiful, but I am hungry. I have eaten bread today. And now it is time to eat. So I'm gonna hop on the metro and get a go-go. What a fall. Don't let this be you. So why not go to the largest shopping area and eat? Because I'm sure they'll have food there. When they said that it was the biggest, I didn't realize it was in three different buildings all connected together. That's insane. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't realize this is the church of shopping. Check out their Christmas windows. They like rival what you see in New York City. Heading to the Chandelier to see the Christmas lights there. Even though Christmas is over. Don't tell Paris that. Check this out. There's a bus that has a whole party in it. There's even a stripper pole in there. They're all having a great time. Oh, Santa Claus is a little late. They've got like this, they got this like portable simulator just here and they also got a little kid roller coaster here. Theme to Christmas. 
Yes, you two could ride Rudolph all the way into Caterpillar Land, apparently. Oh! Chandelier. I've seen some cool cars while I'm here, but this might be the coolest. Yeah, I think Batman would drive this car. That's just me. Does this car give me the dirty eyes? Wow, they got a lot of car places in one of the richest streets in the world. Imagine that. Oh, that. I swear that Toyota comes from Japan. It's like I can't escape it. Would you like to drive this car? And of course, at the end of the Chandelier, there is the Arc de Triomphe. And while the Arc de Triomphe is totally, totally impressive, what's also pretty cool is underneath the Arc de Triomphe, well, underneath the main part of the building, not like underneath the ground or anything. Even though right now I am underground and I get the irony in that, but you should go underground to get it because you're gonna cross a road that's freaking busy all of the time. You'll probably die if you don't go underground and go see it. My favorite thing about coming to the Arc de Triumph at night is this. Look, Bob, I'm a shadow. How you, how you doing? I'm a shadow. <laughs> Yes, underneath the arch of the Arc de Triomphe, there is a burning flame. This is the monument to the unknown soldier. Since 1921, this flame has been burning in honor of the soldiers who have went and died. Thanks for doing your duty so I can go home and sleep well. Oh, Chandelise, you're so pretty, but I really want to end the night looking at that tower one more time because it really is pretty. The area is a little scary, but it is a pretty town. Everyone tries to get pictures of the Eiffel Tower from like different angles, but it looks the same via both angles. But the background does look different. But if you just want the top with no landscape, any angle is fine. Like there's a whole barricade just to get in. You have to go through a security checkpoint just to go underneath the Eiffel Tower. Okay, that's good advice. Have you guys ever seen that movie Inception? I have no idea why that would come to my mind right now. I just absolutely no idea. And now as I stand underneath the Eiffel Tower, this metallic structure of incredible proportions, I do want to tell you guys, you can do it. I can do it. We can all do it. Stay groovy. You guys have a wonderful day. Man, Paris has been treating me well so far. No one's robbed me yet, which is great. I'm also not stabbed, so... Stabbed, not robbed, everything's going good. You guys all stay groovy out there. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe, okay? Peace out, guys. Bye.